there's this relationship piece that undeniable. And both of these things mesh together. And I love how Jesus, he just says, our Father in heaven. Wow, but that statement alone is just, there's so much packed into that. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. I think about the story of, of Diane Disney. I've shared it before, but I just had to share it again because I know many haven't heard it, and it's just so perfect for this situation. When This is the daughter of Walt Disney. She was just a little girl. Uh, she loved Disneyland and all that, and then one day she finally had the epiphany. Wait a minute. Disney? My last name's Disney. Walt Disney. My dad's name's Walt. She walked over, she pulled the paper away from her dad's face, and she said, You're Walt Disney! <laughs> it's like she finally got it! You're that guy? Everybody knows who you are! I think about a time when I was in about fifth grade. My dad, um, uh, we, we lived in Houston, Texas, and there the things that were really huge were uh, the Houston Oilers, which are no longer there, they shipped off to Tennessee, uh, and uh, the, the Johnson Space Center, which was involved in the Apollo missions. You've got mission control right there uh, in the Houston area. And so everybody growing up in that area, we celebrated these two things. We all toured the facilities. Like every year, this was the big thing. Here in California, everybody goes to the missions. We went to the Johnson Space Center. That's what we did. And so everybody knows about this. And you go on the tours, and you, cannot, you can't go in, but you get to see through the windows and can't touch anything and all that kind of stuff. Well, I remember one day, or one night, my, uh, my dad, about 2 in the morning, he said, Hey, Craig, I want you to uh, g- get up. So he got me up, and, I, you know, I didn't know what we were doing, and just thinking, what is my dad doing? My dad repaired computers for IBM at the time. And so he said, Yeah, I want to take you with me tonight. So we both drove in, and it turns out my dad fixed the IBM computers that were in Mission Control. That was one of the things that he got to do. And so he, about 3 in the morning, we drove in. You know, my dad's walking in with all-access passes, and I'm just like, whoa. (laughs) Sat me down. He says, you want a soda and some chips? (laughs) Sweet. (laughs) Go over there, and then he says, hey, you're going to love this. Takes me into mission control. You guys have seen the pictures, the iconic pictures. You guys, you've seen all that. I was walking around inside of there. And he says, yeah, I got a call tonight. One of the computers is broken. I need to fix it. So why don't you sit down there and you have some chips and soda and, 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 and just watch. It was mind-blowing. And I told everybody I knew for years, time and time, they were sick of me telling them the story, but it didn't matter. I, could, I swear to you, my dad was five inches taller than he started out that night, uh, Ever, ever, ever since that moment. There was something about it. It's like, oh, my dad gets to do that? Whoa. Guys, these are the kind of things that we need to understand about our father. And unfortunately, as we grow up in the church, we lose this piece. Because we think, oh, yeah, that's my dad. You know, some of us think about it like that. And we lose the respect. We lose The other side of God and this incredible privilege that it truly is for him. And so Jesus says, I want you to pray like this. I want you to step into it like this. And Jesus creates this incredible scene. And so around here, what we like to do is we use the metaphor of chair time because I think that the metaphor of chair time for our time in prayer, our audience with God, I think it speaks well of really what's going on. Because it mixes the seriousness of the moment with uh, the, the, also the relationship of the moment. Because I think in chair time, that when we sit in the chair, that what we need to understand is that the audience we're having is with the God of the universe. This is the creator of all things. You exist only because he decided you would. And you're actually in conversation with him. This is prayer. This is what you and I have been invited to, to into. This is what Jesus says we have all access to. And I pay him deep honor 
and respect as I am in the chair. When I sit in the chair, I'm giving him my attention. It's what you do when you sit and you have a conversation with people. You're saying, I want to hear what you have to say. I want to say some things to you. I want to be present with you. I want this to be an experience. Unfortunately for too many of us, there's not another chair in this conversation. It's just not how we think about it. And Jesus says, (laughs) you know what? There is. Do you know who's in that chair? Hey, who's in the other chair matters. There are certain people that when they're in that chair, you're writing down every single word that they say. I mean, it's like a script you could write it because every word you're hanging on. And here's the interesting thing is there are certain people when I meet with them, what they have to say, I may not even fully understand it, but I'm going to write it down because I want to think about what they said later because I know there's something there. I'm just too dense to get it yet. But I'm going to capture it. And then there's other people that we don't give the attention to. And we think, oh, I get these opportunities all the time. It's not that big of a deal. It's a privilege. And Jesus says, it's yours. It's a privilege. And Jesus said, it's mine. And this is what we are invited into We give them their attention. I'm committed to the conversation and the back and the forth. This is what we do. But unfortunately, this is not how many of us think about our audience with the Father. And we really should because it would revolutionize everything. How could you not make this priority for your life? And do I actually have to sit in a chair? No. But it's a good metaphor to help us understand. I don't care if you walk. I don't care what you do. But when you can actually give yourself in conversation, you can give your heart, your mind, and devotion to whatever in the world is about to come out of his mouth for you. Then that's chair time. And that's our audience with God. And that's what Jesus said is absolutely made possible. This is what we do. And as I'm sitting in the chair, I'm recognizing that he has already told me who he is. He said, I'm your father. And I don't mean like in the Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker sense. He's my father. And so I'm able to pick my face up off of the floor. He tells me who I am present with, which draws me closer to him. Because as he tells me I'm his son... I'm understanding this conversation at a whole different level. He's my true father. He created me by choice. He loves me. And he feels a deep responsibility to me and for me. Here, here's, this, is, this is so key. Some of us, you need to hear this because this is not the father that you had. A father's love cannot release itself from his concern for me. A father's love won't allow it. It just won't. It just, it just can't. It cannot release itself from its concern for me. It tells me who I am to him. It tells me who I am to him. It tells me that I belong. Some of us, you don't feel like you belong. You belong. I'm his, I'm wanted, and I am deeply loved. This is what our time in the chair, this is what the audience with God is able to give to us. I think about one of the greatest joys of my life. It's being Seth and Hannah's father. I would sell everything. As soon as they were born, it was my life for theirs. Whatever sacrifice had to be made. Because that's what a father does. That's who a father is. And I get that many of us didn't have that father. But that's who he is. And Jesus says, I get that you don't get it. But if you'll lean into this truth, you'll get a lot. 
I don't want my children to ever doubt my love for them, no matter if I have to discipline them or if I'm showering generosity on them. I never want them to doubt my love for them, and I want them to rest in the fact that nothing they do could ever change the fact that I'm their father. I said, well, that's great, Craig. That's you. Yeah. I'm some earthly flop and have a perfect father in heaven who says, hey, you know this thing down here that you see that's pretty good? Well, I'm the perfect version of that. And that's who you have an audience with. Oh yeah, and by the way, I created you. Gave you breath. This is who we are. This is what we're meant to understand. I am your father. And then Jesus says, I am your father. He is your, our Father who is in heaven, which is amazing because if you think about it, it's the place we can't access, but all of a sudden now hope is breaking through because heaven is now accessed as well. The things of heaven are now accessible to me because Jesus just told me so. That's not, that's not the presumption. That's not me hoping against hope. That is Jesus telling me that heaven is accessible to me through my relationship with the Father.